In November 1982, 24-year-old Michael Jackson released Thriller. And with that historic piece of vinyl, a phenomenon was born. The record flew out of stores. It, it, it could not be stopped. From the iconic look to, to the moonwalk, to the glove, the red jacket, and with the zippers, and glasses, and the white socks. R&B superstar, Usher. You know, if it wasn't music, it was obviously dance that influenced us. Saying beat it to the competition, for 37 weeks, the album sat at number one and is, to this day, the top-selling album in the world. Thriller broke records with seven top ten singles, and it also broke barriers. Of being the first black artist to ever have a video played on MTV was pivotal for all of us. There would be no other form, honestly. There would be no BET. There would be... Uh, that wouldn't even be the MTV that is now without Michael Jackson's influence. And, of course, it paid off for all of us because, I mean, I, the, the idea of MTV without Michael Jackson's videos from Thriller is, is almost inconceivable. Fan clubs, trading cards, Michael Jackson dolls. The craze reached a fever pitch in 1984 hey, when a Pepsi commercial gone awry sparked even more frenzy. He's on the set and he's descending a staircase. There's a flash behind him and his hair catches on fire. But the, the most incredible part of that whole thing was that on his being wheeled to the hospital, you know, he's waving to his fans with, with the, the glittery glove, you know, to the end a showman. One month later, Jackson took home eight Grammys. He also raised eyebrows with his red carpet companions, Brooke Shields and Emmanuel Lewis. I don't think anybody, even like the Iowa housewives, were saying, well, you know they're not sleeping together. And Emmanuel Lewis was right there as the underline, like, this is not sexual at all. In July 1984, the Jackson 5 reunited in a flurry of publicity, but their victory tour reviews were mixed. Months later, Jackson partnered with Lionel Richie on an effort that was more warmly received. Concerned about hunger in Africa, Richie and Jackson wrote the song, We Are the World, and assembled a super group of two dozen artists to perform it. Now, one great thing that happened that we both had to realize, I can't read or write music, and Michael cannot read or write music. So, how do you write a song called We Are the World? So we started listening to this tracks like da 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 And we started, this is where we started. It was a triumph for Jackson as a musician and as a humanitarian. Despite the success of We Are the World in the mid-80s, seemingly soft-spoken Michael was retreating into a world all his own. Michael had begun to exhibit a certain, I think, aloofness and a tendency to kind of withdraw from the world. You know, hysterical adulation does play tricks with your mind. Um, so Jackson was almost doomed to implode somewhat anyway. By 1985, the pop star began looking different. People were talking about his plastic surgery. Every few months, you would see him and you go, whoa, hey, you're looking weird, dude. But I think it was about 85, 86. I was like, wow, he's not going to be able to get any weirder than this. And then two years later, I was like, I was wrong. Family members came to Jackson's defense. Well, you know, you have to say to yourself, who who hasn't? I'm, I mean, his yeah, but his whole thing is if, if there's something that you that you uh, feel that you want to change is and then you you do that there are many people in the past who have done many things to themselves and they're not talked about like my brother is in 1986 a photograph of michael asleep in an anti-aging chamber rocked the tabloids 
In 1987, his interest in the elephant man's bones, Bubbles the Chimp, Liz Taylor, and an array of strange disguises set tongues wagging. And he puts on that, that, that black thing, that mask. And I said to him, take that stupid thing off. You look like a monkey. You look like you're insane. And he said, and, and even then he said to me, well, it was more like he said a razzle-dazzle kind of thing. It's mysterious. He just wanted to give the world the impression that he was like this mysterious kind of enigmatic figure. His mistake is that he took it way too far so that he, he stopped being a curiosity and he started being a freak. Jackson's follow-up to Thriller hit stores in 1987. Simply titled, Bad. The pop star's eccentric behavior hardly deterred the album's record-breaking five number one. Spawning iconic music videos and a sold-out world tour, Bad went on to sell eight million copies, and Jackson went on to change his image once again. Taking a cue from Bad's title, he became a crotch-grabbing tough guy, a far cry from his gentle offstage persona. And yet the money kept rolling in. In March 1988, Jackson finalized a purchase of a 2,600-acre ranch. The cost, $19 million. He filled the property with an amusement park, a private zoo, and dubbed the oasis Neverland. There's a reason it's called Neverland Valley, you know? His fixation on, on the I won't grow up, I'm a lost boy, I'm Peter Pan. And with Neverland came the children. Michael began to sort of surround himself with, with young boys. Uh, and, and much to, I remember, the chagrin of people who were working for him. Yes! Three years later, in the fall of 1991, Dangerous was released. Long awaited, the buzz was big. As a result, its lead single, Black or White, shot to number one. Don't matter if you're black or white. Coincidentally, fans were wondering about Michael's much lighter skin tone. From black to white. Why? Jackson told Oprah he suffered from a rare skin disease. If you believe the fact that he, you know, that he has this congenital skin condition, and that's why he's so white then fine but a lot of people think that that he has bleached his skin with michael jackson you never know what the truth is coming up scandal rocks the gates of neverland In the early 1990s, Michael Jackson's new music, even fresh R&B hits like Remember the Time, couldn't come close to the phenomenon he had created with Thriller. Nothing was the same after Thriller. It was his uh, greatest blessing, but I think also his biggest curse. Even though Jackson couldn't replace his earlier success, he never stopped innovating. Record producer Ronnie Jerkins worked with Jackson. Michael calls me and he says, why can't we create new sounds? I said, what do you mean? He was like, someone created a drum, right? Someone created a piano. Why can't we create the next instrument? This is a guy 40 years old who has literally done everything that you can think of, but still hungry enough to say, I want to create an instrument. Despite his creativity, record sales dwindled as Jackson's appearance grew stranger with whiter skin and a severely altered nose and chin. The fact that he has spent as much time as he has changing his face, changing his appearance, it's reminiscent of patients who suffer from body dysmorphic disorder, which is a condition where when a patient looks at themselves in the mirror, they just hate what they see. Jackson.